I don't really know how to talk about this topic, to be honest, but I'm going to give it a try, and I'm only here to start a conversation, okay? So, if you look at the directors of 1,000 popular films in the last 10 years, you can understand why someone might say that filmmakers have to be male, because 96% of them have been men. Things are slightly more diverse when you include writers, producers, editors and cinematographers in that data, but there's still a significant imbalance. And of course the big question is, why is this happening? Now, what initially got me thinking about this was this tweet from Jen Richards. I rarely meet men in real life as extraordinary as ones on film, and rarely see women on film as extraordinary as ones I know in real life. And hearing that was like, yeah, I can easily rattle off tons of male characters that are extraordinary, whether for saving the entire planet, sacrificing their own life for someone else, just being exceptionally intelligent, or iconically and complexly evil. Now, of course, there are some female characters in mainstream films that are similarly exceptional, similarly extraordinary, but I think it's fair to say the list is smaller, and that's kind of odd. Now, if you combine that with Dr. Stacey Smith's huge analysis of who is given the speaking roles in movies... Females are still noticeably absent on screen in film. Across 800 movies and 35,205 speaking characters, less than a third of all roles go to girls and women. It really seems like there's an imbalance in front of the camera as well as behind. And you know, people have been saying for years that so often it seems like the female characters are only there as a love interest, or only there to look at, while the male characters are three-dimensional and really well developed. But should we really be that surprised by this, based on how many of the directors and writers are men? So I asked people on Twitter for some ideas as to why film careers are so male-dominated, and here are some of the responses. <laughs> Because women don't engage in labour-intensive careers as much as men do. This is by choice and not due to discrimination. And same reason why women tend to dominate nursing and teaching industries. On average, it seems men are more interested in the biz than women. Now, there is definitely some logic to that rationale. Like, it's, it's true that if there are more men who are interested in filmmaking, it would make sense that more men would end up being filmmakers. So for example, these videos are about filmmaking and they're completely free, so in theory, anyone who is interested in filmmaking could watch these. And yet my analytics show 90% male viewers, which suggests that maybe the average man is more interested in filmmaking than the average woman. But then I saw Lizzie's response to my Twitter question. On filmmaking she said, I've never met a girl or any friend of mine with that same interest. So I asked her, whether she thought that more young women would be interested in filmmaking if there were more, more female role models in, in the industry. And she said she thought there would. We're not seeing women in leadership positions, so therefore we're not seeing it in real life. One interesting example is that we studied the occupations of all female characters in film and TV, and on TV, there are so many female forensic scientists. How'd you find her wheels? because of CSI and those shows, that colleges are scrambling to keep up with the number of women who want to study forensic science because they've seen it, right? And they say, hey, that looks great, I could do that. Well, we're not seeing women directing uh, films. We're also not seeing female directors on screen. Because the truth is, I don't know how different my life would be if the tables were turned if directing was so female dominated that most people couldn't even name three male directors. Like imagine if Hitchcock, Kubrick, Spielberg, Tarantino, imagine if they were all female. Surely I'd be less likely to pursue filmmaking. I mean, I'd like to think that I would go against the grain and that I would still want to be a filmmaker, but I honestly don't know what that would be like. And so I don't think we can dismiss these conversations about inequality just by saying that women are less interested in filmmaking. Because what if it's a cycle? There are fewer female role models in filmmaking, so that probably means that women are less likely to pursue a career in film, which then means that in the future there will be less role models. But of course, even if that's true, there's never just one factor to things like this. That can't be the whole story. And there's actually a fair amount of data suggesting that there is a, an active bias against women in Hollywood. 
Now, apparently close to 50% of students at the two major US film schools are female. And yet the higher you rise on the directing food chain, the fewer women can be found. As soon as I made Twilight, I would have thought it would be a lot easier because I could prove that I made $400 million for a studio on a, on a 37 million dollar budget and it spawned a huge franchise and all the other franchises similar to it but it was not easy for me after that in fact it was just as difficult and my next movie I got paid less I did all the steps I did the guyish movies I did the movie that wasn't a chick flick and I was nominated for an Oscar and I had the follow-up feature that won awards you work hard, you achieve your things, you pay your dues and you go up. But when you keep hitting walls when you shouldn't be hitting walls, it all makes no sense to you anymore. Cut! Right away guys, let's go again! And it's even more clear in front of the camera, because big budget movies generally make more money, and yet the studios consistently provide larger budgets to films that are more focused on men. It's not even rational though, because if you look at similarly budgeted movies, the ones that have female characters with speaking roles actually make more money in the US than those with less than two female characters. Even internationally, the films that don't exclude women bring in just as much profit for the studios. And so we have to applaud the women who have been going against the grain, dealing with the doubt from people who are either prejudiced or simply not used to working with female collaborators, and we can be especially grateful to those who have been actively fighting for equality for decades already. And it has been working. Patty Jenkins is breaking records with her success directing Wonder Woman, and although there still aren't many jobs for women in film, things have improved because in 1979 they found that only 0.5% of film jobs went to women. And that number has risen over time. But there's still a long way before we can say that we have equal opportunity. So for now, we have to look at ourselves. For example, a couple of years ago, I directed a short film and there was not a single woman on set for the entire duration of the shoot. And that's, that's on me. And if I remember correctly, I don't think anyone even mentioned it throughout the entire shoot either. No one... It, it wasn't seen as a strange thing to happen. Now, since then, I have made more of an effort to collaborate with women, and not just to fill a quota, not just so I can say that I'm gender neutral. No, it's about hearing different people's perspectives, and I, I honestly believe that it's beneficial to have different kinds of people working on a project together. Just like how a bunch of teenagers would make a very different film to a bunch of 50-year-olds, it's just good to have a range of different, like, viewpoints. So on my last short film, we had an almost 50-50 gender split, and then when two of the actors rapped for the rest of the day, there were actually more women on set. And it's ridiculous to think, but somehow, reflecting the global population of 50-50 actually felt like an achievement. Now at this point, some people will say, hang on, if filmmakers are making a conscious effort to collaborate with women, then won't there be some men who will lose a job or miss out on an opportunity purely for the fact of their gender, even if they are, like, more experienced. And here's my response to that. Let's imagine that the industry was flipped so that 95% of all directors were women, so that there were fewer male characters and they rarely spoke to each other. Now, like, seriously imagine, like, firing most of the male writers, directors, cinematographers and replacing them with women. Just hypothetically, if that happened tomorrow and continued that way for about 100 years, then in total what we'd have is first 100 years of the film world being dominated by men and then 100 years of it being dominated by women. Equality. Now, it doesn't really look like that's going to happen. So when someone suggests that maybe we should just, just nudge things slightly more towards 50-50 split, when someone makes a suggestion like that, why are we complaining? Now, of course, a lot of these ideas also apply to racial inequality, and women of colour are especially underrepresented in the film world, but I want to look at that properly in a future video. So I am really curious to hear your thoughts on this whole topic. I'm, very, I'm going to be down in the comments. This is going to be a discussion, basically. But first, I think it's important to acknowledge the women who have been talking about this long, long before I even realised that this was a problem. So in the description, there are links to the full videos that I've used clips from, as well as the research that I've quoted in this video. 
And to close this video, let me hand over to Jessica Chastain. I do hope that when we um, include more female storytellers, we will have more of the women that I recognize in my day-to-day -day life. Um, ones that ha are proactive, have their own agencies, um, um, don't just react to uh, the men around them. They have their own point of view. Agnes? Yeah. <clears throat> I